Hi, and welcome back to another um, weekly vlog with uh, Natalie. Um, today we're going to be answering paper two style question, and it's going to be to what extent are two of the past World War I treaties justified? Okay, so um, the Treaty of St. Germain and Treaty of Trianon are both major peace conferences trying to reach major decisions um, for the world after World War I came to an end, and having to decide land distribution, amounts of reparations, and peace agreements for multiple countries, uh, it caused a lot of major friction. Two of the major peace treaties were Treaty of Trianon and Treaty of St. Germain, and Treaty of Trianon can be described as the disembarment of Hungary where their land was taken, their army had to be reduced, they lost a lot of their major assets that they gained in the war and even before that. The Treaty of St. Germain was the destruction of the first half of Austria, Hungary, in which Austria had land taken, army limited, and so it's a lot like the Treaty of Trianon. They lost the ability to uh, become a political power and both treaties were important and can be seen as justified or unjustified, which is what we're going to look into. In this video. So the Treaty of St. Germain can be seen as the official breakup of the Habsburg Empire as new countries were formed, armies were limited, and there were reparations having to be paid. Throughout the 1900s, Austria-Hungary was a very big threat to European peace as they were so strong isolated, let alone being paired with Germany with their strong bond. This strong bond is basically the blank check, which was Germany gave the blank check to Austria on July 14th, 1914, and the blank check was just in Germany giving Austria their full support, their full backup, if Austria-Hungary decided to invade Serbia. So Austria-Hungary having this extra support from Germany was uh, the final decision that led them to invade Serbia. Without this blank check that was given by Germany, they may have felt too weak or that Serbia would come back and invade Austria-Hungary after if they didn't have the full support from Germany. So destroying this alliance between Germany and Austria-Hungary, which was one of the terms of the treaty, ensured Europe that destroying this alliance, Austria would not have the second party that would help them invade Serbia, which put major European powers at ease. So historian Sean McKinnon believes that the reason for World War I was in fact the alliance and the, the strong bond between Austria-Hungary and Germany justifies the term of the treaty which disregarded their wish to become one country and actually split them up completely. During the time of Austria-Hungary trying to occupy Serbia, the other countries were trying to find ways to stop Austria-Hungary completely so they would not um, seize the entire area of the Balkans. So in order to ensure the security of Austria-Hungary not being able to invade the other territories that the other European countries were worried about, their army was reduced to 30,000 men. Um, this term was set in place uh, strictly for protection and navy being broken up so they were able to protect themselves but they weren't able to invade. And trying to keep peace among Europe, this is a very justified term. Without this in place, Austria would return to invading Serbia and other Balkan states, which is exactly what they didn't want. And um, Dr. Annika Mamber uh, states that Austria-Hungary invading Serbia was the reason World War I. The Treaty of St. Germain not only forced Austria to not gain land, um, they had taken it away, and Austria was split into many countries, including Poland, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and Romania, thus allowing more countries to be discovered and even developed and not let Austria have as big as a support team or rule with nationalism. The terms of the Treaty of St. Germain allowed Europe to believe they had peace. However, the terms were not always justified. Uh, during the treaty, Austria got 83,600 um, square miles taken from them, which were turned into other countries. And since this land was industrial, this led to Austria not being able to pay the reparations that were due because they had no industrial land to make money, which led to Austria not being able to pay reparations that were due. However, no set price of payment was place, so Europe decided to get them to stop paying when they had the amount they needed, which is unjust to Austria, as you never know the amount of money you're going to have to pay. The Treaty of St. Germain, which we just talked about, was Austria, while the Treaty of Trianon was Hungary, and the Treaty of Trianon was also justified and unjustified with different terms it included, considering Austria-Hungary was one, they also had 
the major support from Germany, which had to be shut down instantly, as well as them taking away land so they could not be as powerful as they were before. Taking away 75% of their land was very justified considering how powerful they were. Uh, historian J. Cloud believes looking back in hindsight it's bad. However, at the time, the government were trying to make the right decision and be as fair as possible. Having the army cut down was justified uh, due to the treaty wanting to stop invasions. And so having 35,000 maximum made it possible for Hungary to protect themselves but not attack. And this these terms are very similar to the terms from the Treaty of St. Germain, which were put on Austria. Many terms of the treaty were fair and justified, however many were not as well. Getting land taken away was fair, however the treaty took away their industrial land while setting a reparation pay of 200 million gold um, crowns. So this is unjustified due to Austria-Hungary not being able to do anything because they have no source of income. Uh, and also having what you worked for, which is like the land for so long, to be taken away in one treaty is very unjustified. And so the treaties were set in place to help Europe keep peace. Um, and many terms were justified and unjustified. Land was taken away, reparations were set, and armies were cut down. Austria-Hungary got a lot of what they deserved after World War I. However, some of the terms were too much. This has been another History Movement with Natalie. I hope you enjoyed, and see you next week.